guys, this is your girl Wakeji Kamore and welcome to Reflections by Wakeji Kamore. <laughs> Second Chronicles chapter 12. If you haven't read for yourself, do I have to tell you this? Pause this recording and read the chapter for yourself just so that you understand what is happening in the chapter. This chapter has so many lessons, <laughs> but I'm going to try and not speak about all the lessons, but I'm going to try and, you know, like just, you know, just mention the lessons here and there as I go through the chapter. So verse one, I'm going to read a few chapters because I want to be specific about where my lessons um, are coming from. Verse one says, but when Rehoboam was firmly established and strong, he abandoned the law of the Lord. Imagine. Imagine when he was firmly established and strong. That doesn't shock me because I know there are some times in my life when I felt, you know, my life is going well. I am well financially. I am like, you know, if I want to buy something, I can easily buy it. Um, I am well, like I have a relationship in my life. It's going well. My relationship with my sisters is okay. My businesses are fine. And I just felt like, you know what? Eh. I don't have to read the word of God or I don't have to pray or I don't have to, you know, sometimes when we become family established and strong, sometimes when we become blessed, sometimes when we, our prayers are answered, that is when we abandon the Lord. That is exactly what happened to Rehoboam. He says, but when Rehoboam was family established and strong, he abandoned the law of the Lord. Another half of that chapter says, and all Israel followed him in this sin. This is the, <laughs> the influence of a leader. Unfortunately, this guy had a lot of influence, as all leaders do. All leaders have a lot of influence. And all the, all the, it says that all of Israel followed him in this scene. Can you imagine? All the tribe, like the tribe of Judah and the tribe of Benjamin, they actually followed him in this scene. So they all abandoned the law of the Lord. And that is basically the influence of a leader. So ask yourself, in the spaces that God has set you up as a leader, what kind of influence are you having in the people's lives? Are you having a positive influence or a negative influence? Because imagine, whether you like it or not, you're having some sort of influence. And then verse 2 says, Because they, they were unfaithful to the Lord, the king, king Shak, Shishak <laughs> of Egypt came up and attacked Jerusalem. Why did the king come to attack Jerusalem? This is the simple English questions that we used to do in primary where we would have like a short story and then you asked questions that have come from the story. So the question is, why did King Shishak of Egypt come to attack Jerusalem? And the verse is there. The verse says in at the beginning of verse 2, it says, because they were unfaithful to the Lord. Because, Israel, because this um, tribe of Judah and uh, the tribe of Benjamin and their king Rehoboam were unfaithful to the Lord that they were attacked. So this shows us that sin has consequences. There's no way you can sin and you will not face consequences. So there are consequences. The other uh, part where I feel like the lessons come for me is verse 7 where it says, When the Lord saw their change of heart, because these people actually <laughs> changed their hearts. Um, and they said, they said, oh, this is what the Lord has done. Uh, we have abandoned him, so he has abandoned us. And really, they humbled themselves. And the Lord um, saw that they were being humble. And he said, because the Lord saw their change of heart, he gave the message to Shemaiah. And he said, since the people have humbled themselves, I will not completely destroy them and will soon give them some relief. I will not use Shishak to pour out my anger on Jerusalem. One of the things that I learned from this verse is that the Lord sees us when we change our hearts when we repent and when we start to walk in his you know in in the in his laws and the things that he wants us to do is that he actually sees the change of heart and then he extends mercy to us so it's not all lost if you have abandoned christ abandoned the lord or abandoned christ because you have become family established and strong or because you have been blessed or because your prayers have been answered or for whatever reason it is that you could have abandoned god that when you change your heart, that the Lord sees that change of heart and he extends mercy. And then verse 8, which is where my biggest lesson has come from. It says, but they will become his 
subjects. So the Lord says, I will not use Shishak, this king, to pour out my anger on Jerusalem. Like what he's saying is that I will not allow him to capture them or to, you know, completely destroy this, um, these towns or completely destroy them, but they will become his subjects. They will become his servants. So they will know the difference between serving me and serving ugly rulers. That is exactly where my lesson is coming from. So one of the things that I notice that when you worship God, you become his servant or you become his subject. And when you worship other things or other gods like money or status or physical looks or, you know, how many followers you have or, you know, like social media. Like when you worship these other gods, you actually still become a servant, but of those gods. So either whatever it is that you are at, whether you are not worshipping God or you are worshipping God, you are someone's servant. You are a servant to whatever it is that you are worshipping. And sometimes worshipping is not necessarily kneeling and, you know, uh, <laughs> kneeling and, you know, doing those like up, up and down, facing the floor, whatever. No, whatever it is that you are setting your time in, whatever it is that you have put reverence over God about, whatever it is that you are, you know, you are constantly thinking about that is the thing that you are worshipping. So whether you're worshipping God, ama you're worshipping whatever it is that you're worshipping, whether it is money, whether it is status, whether it's level of education, whether it is how many followers or the influence that you have on social media, whether it is how you look on social media, because sometimes it's not even the influence, just that I me, mean, I want people to see me this way. And that is just another thing that you're worshipping. It could be status, it could be your physical looks, it could be money, it could be even your children, it could even be a spouse, it could even be a business, it could be a relationship, whatever it is that you're spending most of your time thinking about, most of your time focused on, that's the thing that you're worshipping. And that thing has made you its servant. You, had, you are actually its subject and its servant. So... When you worship God, you become God's subject or God's servant. When you worship whatever it is else you worship, you still become its servant. So you are a servant of whatever it is that you worship. Fortunately or unfortunately for you, depending on who it is that you're worshiping. But one of the things that I like about worshiping God or being a servant of God is that the Bible is very clear that taking up the yoke of Christ is light. It's, there's more benefit from it. In Matthew chapter 11, verse 28 to 30, it says, Take up my yoke and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest in your soul. So taking up the yoke of Christ, number one, is that you will has the benefit of that you will learn from Christ. And let me tell you, there's nothing as beautiful as learning from Christ, learning how to be patient from Christ, learning how to deal to manage a business from Christ, learning how to, you know, to parent your children from Christ, learning how to be a leader from Christ. There's nothing as beautiful as learning things from Christ. So it says, take up my yoke and learn from me. I don't think social media says that. I don't think uh, these are that small gods like money or whatever says take up my yoke and learn from me there's nothing to learn there it's just my test or that's just suffering to be honest it says take up my yoke and learn from me for i am gentle and humble in heart and you will find rest for your soul i don't think there's anything else I don't think there's any other god small g that you can worship that can give you rest for your soul when you worship money, you can never get rest for your soul. I can tell you that for a fact. When you <laughs> worship status, when you worship physical look, when you worship social media, your parents, your relationships, your, your children, whatever it is, your job, you can never find, it can never give you rest for your soul. But there's a promise here that when you worship God and you become a servant of God or a subject of God, then you find rest for your soul because and then he continues to say that my yoke is easy and my burden is light my yoke is easy and my burden is light let me tell you being a worshiper of god is actually easy and that burden is light i'm not saying that it's not hard it is hard even the bible is saying of course it's a yoke a yoke is not fun um a burden is not fun but it's saying that the yoke from the yoke the yoke is easy and the burden is light so the yoke is there and the burden to even just be a believer is there but it's easy and it is light as compared to these other things that people worship out here in the world and i like that god says that he will not um in, uh, back to second Chronicles where he says that he will not let this king ashash shishak completely destroy these tribes but he will allow them to be subjects 
to him so that they can know the difference between serving God and serving ugly rulers or serving God and serving these other gods with small g. So my prayer for you is that you would put down every other yoke that you're carrying, every other God, small g, that you are worshipping, that you would put them down and that you would align yourself and take up the yoke of Christ. Take up the yoke of God. Be a servant of God. Be a worshipper of God. Because then you get to learn from Christ. You get rest um, from rest for your soul. And you get a leader or rather a king who is gentle and humble. And you get an easy yoke and an easier and lighter burden. That is my prayer for you guys. That you will realize and you know find time to ask yourself who it is that you are worshipping. Because whoever it is that you are worshipping, you are actually their servant. Thank you very much for listening. See you tomorrow.